Hello everyone, my name is Kirstutis Jovishes. I'm a co-founder of uh, EdTech startup, EditAI. And in our startup, we help teachers and schools uh, to develop integrated content. Hi, um, my name is Pascal. I'm from Examiner, the creators of the same named uh, digital exam platform. And we help teachers and others to achieve better conditions for the whole exam process. My name is Fabrizio Fracassi. I'm the creator of Fuel, which is a role-play-based interactive writing platform. Fuel helps students acquire reading and writing skills, but most importantly, empathy critical thinking and creativity. Hi, I'm Fatih Gök and I'm from Teach Remote, where we recreate side-by-side -side physical tutoring, but online. Um, currently, we are a team of five people with very different backgrounds. Um, I mean, as a software company, we have for sure software development competences. We have skills in agile, product development, requirements engineering, user experience and product roadmap design and so on. But we also have people with a pedagogical background. The core of our team consists of two co-founders, which is then extended by two advisors. Mettingerk and me, Fatigerk, we actually came up with the online tutoring method ourselves when I was still in high school. The solution we came up with is from personal expertise, but from our background, we're both engineers. Um, we also have Alessandro Mararosa, who is an expert in digital advertising. And also we, we draw our expertise in regards of learning from Professor Dr. Manu Kapur from ETH Zurich, which we are in good contact with. I'm a solo founder and I actually don't have a pedagogical background, but I was able to collaborate with uh, professors of the two most prestigious um, universities of teacher education in Switzerland to develop teaching materials specifically for fuel. Um, so I get all the knowledge and expertise from them. I was also able to collaborate with um, software programmers or software developers. And I, I do it on an as-needed basis. We have a composition probably to cover different uh, areas of expertise that was required to build the product and maintain it. So one is educational. So I'm coming from that area. I have spent more than 15 years in it, working in different projects in education. Then we have uh, Christina, uh, who is expert in AI. Uh, she used to be one of the leaders in women in AI in Switzerland. Uh, Aquile, uh, responsible for the product development uh, and international collaboration. We have our CTO, Thomas, also uh, previously before Edit AI working on different startups in product development, I mean, from technological part of view. And uh, we have one uh, person working with data, data sets and prompt engineering. We also have Yeva, uh, who is responsible for customer care uh, and client management. And also we have uh, our scientific uh, mentor we, we call Valentina. She used to be nominated as a teacher of the year in our country, uh, <clears throat> working quite extensively uh, on international level. So she is advising us on pedagogical side. But then we have a group of teachers uh, coming from our uh, close network also. Uh, we are not working in Edit AI, but we are engaged in testing Edit AI, providing us feedback when we organize different feedback and uh, peer review sessions. So uh, this is our uh, important group. Uh, we cherish and value them very much. As our team doesn't have anyone who's experienced in app development, we actually were outsourcing that knowledge from other um, software developer companies. First, we started in Switzerland. Um, the main 
uh, idea was uh, behind this was, oh yeah, they're nearby, so communication would be easier. But unfortunately, um, things didn't work out quite well because they were out working with an outdated technology. There were actually some troubles because we were not, not ta taken that seriously. And we then changed to uh, uh, Cookie dev a developer based in Ukraine. And there we had a much more pleasant experience because they were way more professional about it. So my advice to any startup who's trying to outsource the technical knowledge in regards of app development and so on, I would uh, I would really say go for these uh, companies which are cheaper, but also thereby have the experience as they have worked on many other projects. I took a different route when I started developing the platform. I did fundraising, but I was not very successful for the technical part of the platform. The only way to finish the project and to actually launch the platform was for me to learn uh, how to program or how to code. So it's unrealistic for someone, for someone like me that has no technical background to start from zero. And I found a method called no code or no code development. And so I, I started learning that it still took me half a year to a year to learn. But then I was essentially able to do it myself and also in a very fast way. And for the little bits and pieces of the software um, that I didn't know a solution for, I had a network of other developers that use no code and I just contacted them. Well, I'd say it was always difficult. We noticed that from the start when we started working with our first app developer. Um, but basically what we tried to achieve, which we still kind of struggle today with, is by extending the team to also include people from that field of expertise. So what we were forced basically to do was to um, deepen our knowledge in regards of app development uh, in order to make it work. Uh, for other uh, sectors, for let's say pedagogical uh, sectors, it was uh, a lot easier because as a student of ETH Zurich, I'm already quite engaged in the receiving end of education. And having a professor uh, with Do Professor Dr. Manu Kapoor uh, of learning sciences at ETH Zurich, we can make this critical connection and get the necessary information in order to make it work. The difficulty was on one side for me to understand how how you teach students, how which methods are around, um, and I had to learn um, or inform myself about this. And on the other side, it was also important that everyone um, working on this platform understands the product vision and where, where I want to go with that. So it was important for the professors to understand what, what the end goal of using fuel is. And it was also important and sometimes difficult uh, because of the medium itself. So the professors had a lot of experience in writing teaching materials for print, but they did not have a lot of experience in writing teaching materials for the digital space and for, for a web platform. But when we started developing the teaching materials, we didn't have a platform yet. So I didn't have much to show them. So it was a step-by-step -step process that run in parallel. So while I was developing the platform and the design, I was also uh, working with the professors to develop the teaching materials. My belief is it would have been better if I had had a finished product or uh, something, you know, uh, a better defined structure that I could show them, you know, how, what it does, how it works. And so it would have been easier for them to write teaching materials for that. Our startup is fairly small. So that means we don't have too many cooks in the kitchen. There, I remember there are um, startup events like uh, up nights in Zurich where 
you would have startup uh, entrepreneurs coming from all over the place explaining how, what were their main problems that drove a startup into the ruin or how they made mistakes in the first place, but then bend it around correctly. And uh, what I noticed is if you have too many people, you get too much input, you lose focus. And in the case of having a small startup, you do have the focus, you know what the next steps are, and you don't basically lose time going into the side quests of the main storyline. I, I guess the advantage of uh, being a solo founder is that it's easy and uh, streamlined. You have a streamlined process. Uh, you have a very short uh, decision-making process. Uh, you're fast and independent. You don't have to discuss uh, your ideas with, with someone else, but you can consult other people. You can talk to teachers. You can talk to maybe other uh, founders even and ask for their opinion. But in the end, it's your decision. And you don't have other people who might differ from your decision or your course. I don't think if if I'm successful with Fuel, I don't think it will work just to stay solo but, uh, forever. But I think it's it's very good when you start a process because it makes the product very personal. And my background is film, so I have a mindset of a director, <laughs> which is similar, you know, some um, advantages of having a, a small team is that, you know, the communication part for small, it's quite easy to organize, organize yourself and um, you're very, very fast. You can make fast decisions and you don't need a lot of time to, to inform all the people that, they are, that everyone is on the same page regarding, you know, uh, actual information or goals or strategy and so on. Our core team consists of five people. And, you know, covering education and sales, international testing uh, and collaboration, covering uh, uh, client support and also product development and technology itself. We believe that, you know, uh, five uh, uh, directions are covered, you know, from the competency point of view. If you are only two, uh, then you will in in instantly lack of something. We have a group of teachers uh, coming from our uh, closed network. When we release a certain version of Edit AI, say Edit AI, Edit AI 1 or Edit AI 2, we give them uh, a test version uh, with the questionnaires and they are engaged in testing Edit AI, providing us feedback when we organize different feedback and uh, peer review sessions. And then when we reach the certain level of quality within that group, then we go to school. We are given very diverse feedback because this group consists of different uh, pedagogical backgrounds of teachers. Teachers themselves are our best feedback providers. So we maybe compensate that lack of pedagogical background ourselves by really being present to the things where they are happening, I mean, in the classroom. The feedback we are interested in is mainly about the end user experience. So we have the MVP, we have it ready, set it on a desk and people start using it. And what we are interested in is how do the people feel? How do they believe it affects their learning experience? and uh, whether they would use it in a private environment uh, with uh, between them and some other friend from other, another school. Sometimes we proactively ask teachers for their feedback or they provide feedback just uh, on their own. We take this feedback and yeah, put it in our product roadmap. For the teaching materials that we developed, uh, we uh, tested early on with, with classes in Switzerland. So we, we developed uh, small portions of the teaching materials, sent them out to teachers, and then got feedback from them and then iterated on that. And there was an iterative process that went on and on and on. And for the technical side, for the platform, I did not uh, test it or put it out until I was almost done. And that's because my belief is that uh, the customer owns the problem 100% and I own the solution 100%. And it's my job to understand what the problem is or what the platform should be able to do and then come up with a solution that 
works extremely well. I think that when you're testing and you're putting out something that is not fully fledged or, or well done, um, the feedback that you get is probably also half-baked or not very uh, useful. So in my experience in Zurich, it was quite difficult. That was actually before COVID. Um, they were like, okay, yeah, we already have a system that works like physical tutoring. We don't really need online tutoring. Why should I get this in the first place? And since it's so easy to replicate the method, uh, they try to do it themselves, despite uh, signing an NDA and us having a patent for the method which we're employing. After COVID, it actually got better. People didn't question this necess the necessity of online tutoring, but um, we were still faced with the issue of them having too little time to look into, taking ages to have a conversation via email. It is really easy to communicate with, with the teachers. They are very kind and very helpful, and they also get very helpful insights what they need or what is the specific requirements maybe for their school or for a specific area. They are also very honest to, to when we ask questions. They also recognize that we are on the other side of the communication part, uh, take our time and listen to, to their needs. So I think it's that, that also helps so that we not, don't just ask and nothing happens afterwards, you know. It's important to provide the teachers with uh, resources that, that show them how to use your tool. But I think it's also important to show the students why it's important to use your tool so that they're more motivated in using it, so that they see a reason in using your tool and that will help uh, the process. Yeah, essentially, it will make the students more engaged. That's uh, something that I can tell from my own experience, um, that if students don't see a reason to use their tool, they're not gonna be that motivated and not that engaged. Mm -hmm.